Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about five different ways that you can get into reading in the digital age and I'm going to be showing you these techniques which will allow you to hypothetically read 100 books by the end of this year. But before we get into that, we need to address the question, why should you get into reading? Now, in the digital age, it's relatively easy to get distracted on our phones by using things like social media unproductively and it's really easy to lose track of time and to not have enough time at the end of the day for ourselves and with reading you can learn different things and you can take this time and give it to yourself in a sense you're effectively taking time out every day or even if you can't do it every day at least a couple times a week where you're giving yourself the opportunity to just sit down and read something that you're enjoying, that you want to learn, something that you're interested in. And by doing that, you can actually grow as a person and you'll feel a lot better by doing so. So the first tip is to choose something you're actually interested in. So by this I mean maybe you have a specific interest, for example, maybe cooking, maybe you're interested in mindfulness and well-being, you can look at books related to those subcategories and you can start identifying what kinds of books are in those in those niches, those uh, select niches and you can start identifying different kinds of books that you might be interested in reading. And you will be very inclined to read those books which are actually of interest rather than books that are just plain boring. Like if you were to ask me to read I don't know, a, a book on, any, on like history or something, I probably might not be as interested, whereas a different kind of subgenre of book. So that's the first tip. Choose books you're actually interested in. It makes life a lot easier. The second tip is to set a goal with reading. Now, what does this mean? So it could mean that you want to learn a new skill, maybe you're interested in a topic and you'd like to have more information about it. Whatever it is, that's your goal, trying to learn something. The reason being is because that way you kind of have a reason why you're reading. I mean, you can read just for the sake of reading if that's pleasurable to you. Don't get me wrong, that's, a, that's cool, but by all means, more power to you. But if you're just beginning to read, you, know how, you don't, normally don't have a long attention span and a long amount of focus in terms of reading, then it's probably a lot, it's much easier, I should say, to just figure out what you're trying to accomplish by reading. So maybe you want to learn about how to stay mindful. I've got a book recommendation for that, uh, Mindfulness by Gil Hassan. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you'll, re you'll probably remember a couple years ago me recommending that book actually. It was a pretty good book. Um, so if I wanted to learn about mindfulness, I could read that book and just learn some techniques on staying mindful, for example. Whatever it is, that is your aim. And the reason you're setting it is because now you have something to work towards, you have a reason why you're actually reading in the first place, and you'll be more likely and more inclined to actually finish the book rather than leaving it halfway through or just buying a book and it collecting dust on your bookshelf. So that's the second tip set a goal with reading. The third tip is especially good if you are a new reader and that is to start small. Now what do I mean by this? So you see people that read seriously thick books maybe like five to seven hundred pages and you might be intimidated by reading that saying that I don't want to read that entire book it'll take me so long. That's fine you don't need to. You can start off with a really small book I'd say the smallest you could go with is 100 pages. Anything less than 100 pages is really a booklet more than a book itself. Um, so that's what I would class as a, as a really small book, like 100 pages. And then you could just build up bit by bit. So uh, 100 pages of, is this one book. And then the next book you read, 150 pages, then 200 pages, etc. By starting small, you get you make life a lot easier for yourself and you're taking yourself and stepping stones rather than jumping in the deep end when you've never swum before. Don't kill yourself with reading. It can be a lot easier, especially if you start small, and it's probably a lot cheaper as well, especially if you're not entirely sure you want to be 
a continual reader, then starting small is a lot cheaper because obviously you'll, you might find books that are like three or four hundred pages which might cost you like 10 to 20 quid, whereas you might find a book with like, I don't know, 150 pages which might cost you about three quid, maybe, I don't know, it depends what you're looking for. So that's the third tip, start small. The fourth tip is to not view it as a chore. Now, the reason, the reason I feel that people read, like, that, that lose interest in reading, I should say, is because they're viewing it as a chore. In this modern day, most people are viewing reading as something that must be done. You must do it to elevate your status uh, of who you are. Um, and of course, reading is very good for you. It's, it, 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 it makes you think a lot more than you would rather than, I don't know, scrolling through Twitter, maybe. I mean, well, that's, that's not exactly true, considering I've seen some really interesting and thought-provoking tweets. So that's probably not the best example, but you get what I mean, the contrast. When you read a book versus using, I don't know, maybe, what, I don't know, maybe even watching some YouTube video, like this one, although this one might be thought-provoking and I hope it's helpful so far. And if it is, be sure to smash the like button. Thank you. And, I feel as though, with people continuously pushing reading, it's made, it's made to look like this thing where you should do it, you need to do it, you need to do it, you need to do it, even if you don't want to do it, and if you have no desire to read, and you're just being forced into reading, you're not going to do it, you'll be wasting your time. You'll just be, you're better off just spending that extra half hour, hour that you're going to be reading probably sleeping because you'll be bored and you won't be interested in the content and you won't be absorbing it. You'll probably just be skim reading to get through but you won't actually retain anything. You won't understand what's actually going on. You might be reading a story which is about a time traveller or something and then you're reading the book super quickly just to get as many pages out the way so you can say okay I've got a book done but you think the story is about I don't know an alien or something, an alien species. You could be completely way off just by skim reading right so don't view it as a chore do it as something that you're actually interested in and by following the tips as well previously alongside this tip it'll make your life a lot easier to get into reading and the fifth and final step is to set up an environment for reading now what does this mean so when you're reading you obviously have surroundings around you you're not going to be in an empty space where well, you might be i don't know but the probability is you're going to be reading maybe in your room, maybe in a lounge, wherever. Maybe if you're a hipster, you'll probably be taking a book to the coffee shop while you have your Starbucks, for all I know. Whichever it is, you have an environment around you. And you want to set up that environment so that you can read effectively and you won't get distracted. So what does this mean? So it means putting away your phones and distractions, your phone, your laptop, your tech, whatever. If you need to have your phone just to like if you need to keep something to track of time, get a watch and just keep track of time then. Um, and what I'd say is you could try different ways of reading. So, for example, Ty Lopez says to lie, that he prefers lying down like and reading. Uh, I also used to do that before. I find it more comfortable to read. But if I'm really, if I'm, if I'm getting like somewhat tired, it's much more easy for me to fall asleep. So that's why I suppose people enjoy nighttime reading. But I think, I mean, it depends on you. You could try lying down and reading. You could try sitting up in a normal chair and reading. Just try different ways of reading. Try different environments. Try, and maybe have a cup of coffee as well. For me, I enjoy drinking coffee when I read. It just makes, it just makes the experience a lot more nicer and a lot more pleasant rather than not rather than reading and not having like a beverage and if it's late then fine have a cup of tea or something but something that makes you makes the entire experience of reading a lot more interesting and a lot more fun and a lot more pleasurable rather than being something as mundane and boring so that's the fifth tip set up your environment and now one of the moments you've probably been waiting for is how to actually read a hundred books by the end of this year now at the time of this recording, there is about 47 weeks left, which if we do 100 divided by 47 is just about two books a week. Now how can you accomplish this? 
Well, if you follow all of the um, steps I stated before, then you will be able to read faster because you'll be more engaged, you'll be more interested in it. And the chances are, as well when you follow these tips, is that you'll be able to read for a longer period of time. So you might have even set out and just say, hey, I want to read for half an hour today. But if it's a really interesting book and it's actually really captured your attention, you might be reading it for two to three hours and you won't even realize. I remember once when I got into reading again and I was reading The Martian and I was saying, okay, I'll read half an hour and then I'll go, I'll read half an hour before I go, go to bed and then that's it and then I'll just repeat the same tomorrow. And I remember I was reading it for about two to three hours and the next thing I know it's 2.30 in the morning and I'm just like, wait, what? Wasn't I meant to go to sleep <laughs> a while back? I was just so... I was so in, 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 encompassed, no that's not the right word, I was just so engaged by this book and I was really captivated and I was just so interested that my focus went all in there and I just couldn't see, I was just reading, I was just so fascinated, I really enjoyed that book. So that's what ended up happening and by with your, with your focus being divided into reading and being able to read more and reading, you, you'll slowly develop faster reading speeds and you'll be able to read more in a read this, read more in a shorter time frame and you'll be able to effectively read two books a week which is a lot by the way it is a lot for anyone to read two books a week anyone that does that is either very fast at reading or they've they've just spent so much time reading or they just reading really small books maybe I don't know but that's how you can read a hundred books effectively in it by the end of this year. So just a quick recap, the five tips were choose books you're actually interested in, set a goal with reading, start small, don't view it as a chore and set up your environment for reading. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do find it helpful, then be sure to smash the like button, drop a comment as to what you'd like to see on this channel. And of course, if you're new around here, subscribe. We're very close to 50 subscribers and it would mean the world to me if you did subscribe. And share the video as well if you do enjoy this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.